Hi friends, very very good morning all of you. How are you? Sir, Sunday morning you are taking the class, special class, extra class and you are asking how are we, how will we be sir? Weekends also you are not leaving us sir. There is a saying which is actually a film dialogue. A dog is a dog on Sunday also. No? Sunday it will not become something different. So, you are a chartered accountancy students, I am a chartered accountant, so both of us are slaves. Anyway, we work like donkeys only. So, no problem. Sunday also we will study. Sunday also I teach. Okay. So, at the flag end of our uh, previous session, we have completed process costing. You remember process costing is completed. So the extension of process costing is next step to process costing is a chapter by name joint and byproducts. So today we are going to discuss this topic joint products and byproducts. Okay, very important topic repeatedly asked in the examination. Good weightage is there. But very simple, very small and very easy topic, very easy to understand and I will put 2-3 stories so that it will become more easier, it will become more easier. So basically let us prepare the background for this joint products and byproducts, what the topic is all about, what the topic is all about. So this is a process. This is a process. So, in this process, you have introduced raw material and you have put conversion cost, labor and overheads. Say raw material 3 lakh rupees, labor 2 lakh rupees, overhead 2 lakh rupees, total 7 lakh rupees is the process cost. So, when you prepare process account, when you prepare process account, process 1 account, till yesterday what you have done, to raw material cost, to direct labor, to expenses, to overheads, all these costs are accumulated. Say for example, this is, you know, in our example, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, for example, 3, total 10 lakhs, example, only example. So this 10 lakhs will be given to 10 lakhs will be given to normal loss, abnormal loss, work in progress and output. So this output will be transferred to next process. So this output will be transferred to process 2 account. Till this you remember the story. So this is what we used to do in process costing what we used to do left hand side input input left hand side input right hand side results outputs so left hand side cost will be accumulated right hand side cost will be apportioned to abnormal loss work in progress and output so this is our normal story now the point is what if what if what if i have three outputs output x output y output z Output X is coming 100 kgs, output Y is coming 150 kgs, output Z is coming 325 kgs. What if, what if X has a market value of rupees 50, this is quantity, this is selling price, rupees 50, rupees 20, rupees 5. What if X can be further processed, Y cannot be further processed, Z should be further processed. So, now the confusion is, till yesterday we have done so many problems in process costing, we learned inter-process profits, we learned, you know, calculation of the value of work in progress, we learned the concept of equivalent production, we learned the concept of, you know, one process output becoming the process uh, input for the subsequent process, all these things we have studied, but we have never come across a situation, what if there are many outputs? What if there are many outputs? So, how will you handle the situation? Now, the question is, Pavan sir, 10 lakhs is there. This 10 lakhs, out of this 10 lakhs, 10 lakhs is called joint cost. 
So 10 lakhs is incurred for product X and product Y and product Z together. 10 lakhs is incurred for product X and product Y and product Z together. That means all these output X, Y, Z, all these outputs should have a share in joint cost. So this 10 lakhs is commonly incurred for X, Y, Z. Now, how much of this 10 lakhs belong to X? How much of this 10 lakhs will be apportioned to Y? How much of this uh, 10 lakhs will be apportioned to Z? So, now the question is, how to, how to apportion joint cost 10 lakhs to X, Y, Z? This is today's topic. This is today's topic. Is there any accounting standard for this? No. Is there any, you know, set of rules for this? No. Is there any law which says this is to be done like this, like Companies Act? No. Then how to do? Conventional. The whole costing is conventional. There are cost accounting standards issued by Institute of Cost Accountants of India. That is a different story. In our CA intermediate syllabus or CA final syllabus, we do not study any of the cost accounting standards. They are not there in the syllabus. Even in the cost accounting standards also, whatever, you know, the procedures we are doing in CA classroom or CMA classroom, they are only there in accounting standards, but little, the depth will be more. I have studied cost accounting standards in CMA final. When I have done CMA, CMA final cost accounting standards are there. They are not relevant here, no. For intermediate students, for CA intermediate students, in CA final also cost accounting standards are not there. They are known as CAS. CAS is cost accounting standard. They are not there in your syllabus. So the point is when there are no rules specified that this joint cost should be apportioned in this manner to XYZ in the absence of statutory provisions, in the absence of any, you know, prescribed accounting standards, how will we do? By holding out conventionally, we have been doing under certain methods. For example, you go and ask one expert, that expert will tell you, do one thing simple, this is common cost, no? So this 10 lakhs apportion in this ratio, this is physical quantity ratio. So the 10 lakhs apportion in 100 is to 150 is to 325 ratio, that is physical quantity ratio. Some other guy said, no, no, do one thing apportion in this ratio. Some other guy said, quantity into selling price will give you revenue, apportion 10 lakhs in that ratio. Some other guy said, calculate net realizable value, apportion that in that ratio. So there are basically various methods. We will learn method 1, how to do this. Method 2, how to do this. Method 3, how to do this. That's all. That's all. So basically what we are learning here is, Listen, so I have started the drama here, I have started the whole story here. So there is a process where you are putting raw materials, labor, overhead, other expenses, everything in the process and the process is giving you, and the process is giving you output one or finished unit one, output one, output two. For the sake of ease, we'll take only two outputs. There can be output 3, 4, 5, 6 also. But example, no, I'm taking only output 1 and output. Now, this is called, this is called split of point. The point where this finished goods, output 1 and 2 are there, no, are semi-finished goods, are finished goods, they are splitting and getting separated. This is called point of separation. So, in this box, they are same. But at one point of the process, they will take diversions and they have their own identity now. Say, you started the process on 8th day, just for sake of example, on 8th day, output 1 emerged, output 2 emerged. Then there is a possibility that, you know, this output 1 is called A, output 2 is called B, but even they are intermediary products. They, you know, may have active market or they may not have active market. So from here, again, it will be processed. Then imagine A becomes A plus. 
then this B when you process further it becomes B plus. So imagine if it is 50 rupees value here per cage, if it is 60 rupees value here per cage, after further processing say if it is 215 rupees, after further processing it is 150 rupees. Shall I further process it or shall I sell it at the stage of EA itself? Shall I sell it at the stage of EA itself or shall I further process and shall I sell A plus? Now you may say, Pawan sir, 50 rupees is becoming 215 rupees, Pawan sir. Are you mad? Close your eyes and process it further and then only sell, Pawan sir. You will get more money. Better wait. Wait. There are two points you need to consider. Point number one. Point number one. There will be a further processing cost. What if further process, this is called further processing. So what if further processing cost is 200? So your value addition for because of further processing is 50 becoming 215 that means 165 rupees of value addition is there what if your further processing cost is 200 so is it worth doing it no don't do that this is stupidity so you need to compare whether further processing cost is beneficial what is the cost benefit analysis of further processing so you'll calculate like this oh after processing i can sell it for 215 after further processing okay before further processing i can sell it for 50 okay so what is value addition so take calculator 215 minus 50 165 so value addition due to further processing is 165 value addition due to further processing is 165 correct but if further processing cost is 200 are you mad why are you doing further processing so instead of further processing, you can sell it at a split of point itself. You know, 50 rupees will come. Still you are happy. Now what if in case of B, when B is becoming B plus or super B or another product, refined product, 60 rupees is becoming 150 rupees where the process cost is only say 25. Further process cost is 25. That means for 60 rupees input, you put 25 rupees extra, that means your cost will be 85, but value addition is 150 minus 60, 90 rupees. So invest 25 rupees, get 90 rupees benefit. Now, with your mind, with your common sense, you can say, Pavan sir, we'll do one thing, Pavan sir, what? We will not process A further into A plus, but we will process B into B plus further because A when you do further processing, no benefit. B, when you do further processing, there is value addition and incremental profit is there, Pavan sir. Okay. That is the conclusion. This is point number one. I said there are two points. Oh my God. What are the two points? At, at split of point, 1000 kgs of A came. At split of point, 1000 kgs of A came. After further processing, it could be 600 kgs of A plus only, no? It could be 700 kgs of A plus only. It could be 200 kgs of A plus only. It could be 800 kgs of A plus. Or sometimes it could be 20,000 units of A plus converted into units. This is kgs. A is in kgs. If A plus is in units. So here 1000 kgs are there. There 20,000 units came. Then how will you make a decision? So, so what is the conclusion? What is the conclusion due to further processing, due to further processing, there are incremental revenues. There is incremental cost. What is incremental cost? It is known as further processing cost. It is known as further processing cost. What is incremental revenue? Quantity into A plus is equal to XXX rupees. Quantity into A. How many units of how many cages of A came? That is Y, Y, Y rupees. Now this is X minus Y. So if this is positive, if this is positive, that means more than, you know, further processing cost. If this Compare this cost and this benefit. If the benefit is more than the cost, then further processing is advisable. Then further processing is advisable. So basically, how many broader points we are discussing here? I just want you to understand the scope of the topic. What is the scope of the topic we are discussing about?
then i'll give you one two stories and you can understand it easily so just i am trying to give you one two you know just uh, bullet points in bullet points i want you to understand the scope so there are two major things we are going to learn in this topic point number 1 if a process gives many outputs instead of many outputs instead of one single output till yesterday whatever the problems you have solved there is only one output so if the process gives multiple outputs how to do the accounting so this multiple outputs are there no a b c three uh, products are coming out of the process so first thing is how can i apportion okay in joint products and by products you you know write this in your notes also point number 1 point number 1 this is our yesterday accounts ka notes hai we don't want accounts notes dear bill gates ji please open a new sheet or go to our costing sheet yes this is our costing sheet okay here we see so in you know um, joint products and by products okay in this write down point number 1 point number 1 a process which takes input a process which takes input in the form of materials labor and expenses may give multiple output for example in process 1 account we introduced the following raw materials 5 lakhs labor 3 lakhs write down this as an example expenses 2 lakhs total process cost 10 lakhs total process cost 10 lakhs at the end of the process three products emerged namely product a comma product b and product c this is the story what is the story i started one process okay i started one process okay in the process in the process i have introduced 5 lakhs worth raw material i have put 2 uh, 3 lakhs worth labor and 2 lakhs worth expenses total process cost is 10 lakhs but at the end of the process one output is not emerging three outputs emerged three outputs so this a point number 2 products a comma b and c are either a either joint products or b they can be by products also they can be either joint products or by products joint products or by products they can be joint products by products okay for example for example take crude oil when you are processing crude oil diesel came diesel spelling is right or no i don't know petrol came then uh, some other uh, lubricant oil some other lubricant oils came kerosene came then uh, gasoline came gasoline gas domestic gas we call so all these are joint products from same process so you took crude oil you are processing crude oil and out of this process your diesel will come petrol will come lubricant oil kerosene gas many products are coming so are they by products no all these products have high value and it is the intention of the businessman who is processing this to get all these outputs so he is not willing to get uh, pavan sir i wanted only petrol pavan sir all of a sudden diesel came pavan sir no 
he knows that the moment I start the process at the end of the process I will be getting this much of diesel this much of petrol I know clearly and my intention is to process both I, my expectation is to get both these are called joint products by product means imagine you are manufacturing you are manufacturing copper cables okay that's in insulation you know whatever domestic uh, uh, this wires and all we use for electricity or for uh, you know fiber cables or for uh, uh, tv connections cable connections satellite uh, tv that dth connections wires will be there no so in that wire copper will be there no so i am a company who manufacture this uh, cables wires so in copper cables when you are manufacturing copper cables some copper waste is coming like a kind of you know not a normal loss for example you know i will take one cloth i will cut the cloth and then i will stitch the shirt isn't it so raw material waste will be there no so can i say can i say pavan sir buy the raw material cloth 200 rupees after that a stitch shirt in shirt see 2 meters cloth is split into 1.8 meters shirt and 0 0.2 meters waste cloth you bought 2 meter cloth in that 1.8 meter you know is enough for shirt the edges and all whatever you cut and you will throw no that is say 0 0.2 meters this 0 0.2 meters either you will throw it in the dustbin you will you know just dump it or maybe it will have some you know realization for example if it is copper if it is copper copper uh, or aluminium kind of zinc any metal when you are cutting the edge and when you are dumping it in scrap yard do you think you will throw it in dustbin no even that realizes good amount of value that realizes good amount of value so here if you observe the intention of the tailor is not to get two outputs one is a shirt and one is waste this kind of things are called byproducts so byproduct is something which incidentally comes joint product is something which intentionally made for example take sugarcane industry take sugarcane industry so i have taken that sugarcane stick ganeka stick rehta hai na so that sugarcane stick there is a crusher like how you uh, go to a roadside uh, sugar juice stall and he will take the stick and he will put that in the crusher he will put that in the crusher so this crusher will extract juice out of this cane stick and then there will be pulp there will be pulp he will uh, do that two three times and then he will take the waste pulp and he will put it in the dustbin in in sugar industry in sugar industry there will be some waste called molasses you might have studied this molasses will be used in alcohol processing so this uh, breweries whoever is uh, you know manufacturing alcohol they'll go to sugar industry they'll buy the waste from them they'll buy the molasses from them which is of very high value because in the process of alcohol unless you put this sugarcane waste in some form or the other they might not be able to get the output what they want so if i am running sugarcane industry my intention is to manufacture sugar my intention is to manufacture joggery my intention is to manufacture joggery my intention is to manufacture sugar but my intention is not to develop this molasses which will be used in another industry having said that will i throw this waste in the dustbin no i know that some guy will come and buy so this is my byproduct so in sugarcane industry in sugarcane industry sugarcane processing sugar joggery are main products molasses is a byproduct today why am i thinking what is the spelling of joggery what is the spelling of diesel what is the spelling of petrol what is the spelling of molasses it is running in my mind is it a correct uh, spelling or not Chod, the spelling is wrong anyway i studied in vernacular medium now no problem okay so these are the byproducts now first thing you need to understand is what is the relationship of a b and c are they joint products or are they byproducts so first write down what is the difference between joint products 
and by products what is the difference between joint products and by products write down under that point number 1 point number 1 point number 1 both joint products and by products both joint products and by products emerge out of both joint products and by products emerge out of emerge out of same production process both joint products and by products both joint products and by products emerge out of same production process same production process the difference between these two sets the difference between these two set s e t s sets the difference between these two sets the differences between these two sets are as follows the differences between these two sets are as follows next line a a intention i fun a intention intention hyphen after that write down the joint products are the joint products are intentionally produced the joint products are intentionally produced the joint products are intentionally produced for example for example while manufacturing crude oil while manufacturing while processing crude oil for example while processing crude oil while processing crude oil we get diesel we get diesel comma petrol comma lubricant oils etc we get diesel we get petrol we get lubricant oil etc at the beginning of the process itself at the beginning of process itself we know that there will be multiple outputs we know that there will be multiple outputs we know that there will be multiple outputs which are intentionally processed multiple outputs which are intentionally processed b value a is intention b value uh one second before b value you can write down however in case of by products in the intention itself continue in the intention itself continue however in case of by products the intention of the intention of manufacturer in case of by products the intention of manufacturer is the intention of manufacturer is the intention of manufacturer is 
to get only main product the intention of the manufacturer is to get only main product for example for example while processing paddy into raw rice while processing paddy into raw rice paddy you know we call dhanyam okay when you are making it into raw rice that means this uh, we go to supermarket and we buy rice no so while processing paddy into raw rice husk emerges what is husk that is the layer of the paddy you remove that yellow color uh, wheatish color brown color peel will be there no when you peel that inside rice will be there put two so that uh, husk whatever is there that will be huge in quantity they might have got a realizable value also that can be used as uh, you know some um, what do we call uh, some resource for uh, in hotels and all they cook no previously they used to use this material instead of uh, coal or instead of uh, wood you can use this husk also so they buy people buy that husk also but if you are the owner of that rice mill your intention is to get only raw rice this husk and all is not intention it is not your intention to generate that husk when the husk comes you may sell or you may throw it that is a different story but your intention so try to understand from same process crude oil process petrol and diesel are coming both are intentionally made both are intentionally produced processed but here only raw rice is my intention husk is a by product this is intention next value second point b value normally normally all the joint products will have similar similar significance normally all the joint products will have similar significance that means all of them will have more or less same value or importance either they'll have same value or they'll have same importance you understand so maybe petrol can be 100 rupees gas can be 20 rupees but still there is lot of significance to gas you cannot say pounds are 100 rupees petrol gas is 20 rupees only so gas is a by product no gas is also a joint product so they will have more or less same value <coughs> or same significance importance in case of by products in case of by product the value of main product is significantly higher than the value of by product sometimes the value of by product will be nil or at times insignificant sometimes it can be nil also sometimes it can be insignificant so the value of rice is say 1 crore rupees the value of this by product husk is say 25000 where is 1 crore where is 25000 that means instead of throwing it in dustbin you are selling it at 25000 that's all so these are the two differences theoretically now let me give you you know the important points to be dealt with in the chapter there are two important points to be dealt with in the chapter important points to be dealt with in the chapter one how to apportion joint cost how to apportion joint cost to various joint products or by products two how to apportion joint cost to various joint products or by products okay two whether 
further processing of a specific product is beneficial or not these are the two questions we'll answer whether further processing of a specific product is beneficial or not so if we address these two things the chapter is over whole chapter will do these two things only so first we'll start with point number one then we'll go to point number two now let me give you some examples or let me tell you one story before we move further okay now look here now look here this is a cooker big cooker this is a cooker when you go into your kitchen when you see how your mom is making food your mom has put rice here for boiling and she has put dal here she has put vegetables here she has put some pulses here like some groundnuts and all for evening snacks so there are four racks your mom has put all the four and she has put in one cooker and then she has put this cooker on the stove on so here raw materials can be identified separately raw materials can be identified separately because i know that i have put one kg of rice i know that i have put you know 250 grams of dal i know that these are the cut vegetables i have put so raw material can be identified separately but what about the fuel what about the electricity what about the rent of the kitchen what about the person who is making it is direct or indirect expenses what about the lighting what about the heat what about the steam what about the gas this is called conversion cost so raw material cost okay we can identify what about conversion cost you cannot identify this is one example for you know how to split joint cost between rice dal veg etc now imagine this vegetables are there no cooked vegetables again you are processing that into a you know kind of salad with boiled vegetables also there can be salads or you are using these vegetables cooked vegetables in sambar or you are using these vegetables to make another curry or you are using these vegetables in you know uh, some pulao or some biryani so this has again various other uses this has again various other uses this has again various other uses that is called further processing into another product now you might ask pavan sir what is the professional course we are studying what is the example you are giving beta this is the most appropriate example let us convert this into an industrial example same cooker big cooker industrial cooker imagine you have purchased timber log timber and do you know our papers and all you are writing the notes in one notebook no that notebook has one paper from where the paper comes from timber only no so you have put timber here which is raw material this timber is raw material here so you cooked this you know various uh, types of timber whatever you have put you cooked this to a particular extent till that wood becomes soft you will cook it with some process in industrial cooker then then there can be two three kinds of papers after further processing one can be newsprint paper you will buy notebook with 20 rupees and all like newspaper uh, print will come for rough notes and all you buy that paper that is one second thing a4 sheets you will buy for uh, printers and all certificate paper will be there okay carbon free paper will be there so how many types of paper can be made out of the same process so here this is paper quality one paper quality two paper quality three paper quality ten so many things are coming you understand so pavan sir i used this particular output for this this particular output for this this particular output for this so based on the characteristic and quality i will use it separately now these are my main products 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 how will i apportion this raw materials and conversion cost which is used for common cooking of that uh, uh, timber log 
the timber log when you cook that can that might give you four types of outputs who knows now try to understand this example okay there are two persons there are two friends okay say one is ramya one is kesna this two friends have decided after the class ramya called kesna and said hey hello today is sunday no the other girl said yes pavan sir took a class for 3 hours no yes head is aching no yes i have put oil to my head no yes i took tablet also yes we do some yo yo today ah yes evening we will go to movie ah yes so both these girls went to a movie okay so they took auto rickshaw first one girl hired auto rickshaw she went to second girl's house from there she went to movie pvr for auto rickshaw she paid 125 rupees okay then in the counter they bought two tickets 200 rupees then they ate popcorn popcorn tub big popcorn tub this is 100 rupees in pvr and all popcorn tub will be 400 also it's a different story then they bought samosa 100 rupees they ate samosa also then they had pepsi 50 rupees then they went back in another auto say 150 rupees this time these are the costs they have incurred cost this is one 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 cost they have incurred so two friends incurred the same cost okay now someone paid for something someone paid for something else but any friendship will break when it comes to money any kind of friendship so these two are very matured persons so these two friends said a hey, will do one thing no meherbani you will not spend 1 rupee to me i will not spend 1 rupee to you evening costing class like that we'll prepare cost total cost cost element total cost share of ramya share of kesina so they made a table like this typical costing students so cost element amount share of ramya share of k okay auto rickshaw our first tickets 200 rupees they don't need to break their head on how to apportion this 200 because this is direct cost direct cost per person 100 rupees no so 100 100 you can put it here easy then popcorn lagaya what so this popcorn 100 rupees is there no popcorn 100 rupees how can you apportion that between these two pavan sir 50 rupees 50 rupees maybe that is averaging that is not based on the consumption so you will have the basis pavan sir no problem pavan sir we are friends no we will share 50 50 what if what if one friend ate only four grains of popcorn the full bucket is consumed by another person another person like a pig she was eating first person like a professional just two and then turned and then asked over you ate then can you apportion 50 50 still yes still you can do 50 50 why because there is no other basis so this is a compromise this 200 splitting into 100 100 is purely scientific 100 rupees splitting into 50 50 is you know some arbitrary ad hoc basis because this is a direct cost this is indirect cost indirect cost can only be apportioned cannot be cannot be given directly you cannot trace directly then comes auto rickshaw so this auto rickshaw 125 is there no you cannot do 62.5 62.5 because one person started from her home came to another person's house which is in the way which is on the way 
So first person may be probably take 75, second person may take 50 only. Because the distance you are traveling from your house to the theater technically might differ. So this is on some basis. This is average. Like this you can apportion joint cost between product 1 and product 2. So here who is product 1? Who is product 1? Ramya. Is she a main product? Yes, main product. Who is Kesina? Is she a main product? Yes. Both of them are main products. Now imagine the same example. As it is same example, this is you. Instead of you know Ramya Kesina, this is you. <coughs> this is your cousin. This is your cousin who is 5 years old. 5 years old cousin. So you are not going to movie along with your friend, you went to movie along with your cousin. So your cousin from some other place came to summer vacation to your house and you just love the kid. You are 20 years old and the kid is 5 years old. You just love the kid. The kid came to you and asked, Akka, we go to movie, yeah? You said, okay. So you took the kid in auto rickshaw. Then you went to a movie. The kid asked, I want nachos. You bought the nachos for him. Then the kid asked, I want biryani. You bought that for him. And the kid asked, I want popcorn. I want Pepsi. So all the things you have given. Tickets you bought. And then you went, you sat inside the theater. You enjoyed the movie. The kid also enjoyed the movie. And then you came back. Then the kid said, Akka, we'll share the expenses. Sir. You said, no, not required. Everything is on me. Then the kid said, no. Women empowerment. I am not a girl who will take money from others. Yo. My share I will give. Then you asked the kid, seriously, are you kidding me? Will you share the expenses? Yes. I will share the expenses. Then you asked, how much you have? Then he opened his piggy bank. He or she, the cousin opened the kiddie small bank will be there, no? In that coins are there. So, after going home, he opened that, you know, piggy bank and counted 25 rupees are there. She said, take 25 rupees, my share. From tomorrow, if you say, I have sponsored movie, I'll slap you. Tell everybody that both of us shared the expenses. Take this 20. Now you are counting, idiot, there 1200 is the cost. But still out of your natural love, you know that I am the main product and my cousin is a half ticket. My cousin is not even half ticket, he is 10% ticket. So you never bet on your, you know, you, you never uh, hesitate for the share or you never expect the share. You said, beta, chota bacha hai na. So you tell them, it's okay, no problem. How much you have? 25 rupees. Give 25 rupees. Remaining is mine. So here what is happening? Here what is happening? Total cost is 1200 minus share of share of by product is 25. Net cost is 1175. This will be bond by main product. If there are more main products, this 1175 will be distributed between main product 1, 2 and 3. So, two friends going to a movie is an example for joint cost to be apportioned between joint products. You going to movie with your small cousin or you know one small baby in your neighborhood. You going to a movie. You are the main product. That baby is a byproduct. The byproduct might give you zero rupees. The might product might give you zero rupees but still out of your natural love you are like okay no problem. Dear cousin, come. Or that byproduct may give 5 rupees to you, 2 rupees to you, 10 rupees to you, which is insignificant. Which is insignificant. So, if it is joint cost 1200, if it is main product 1 and main product 2, you will share it on some basis. But the same if joint cost is 1200 between main product and byproduct. First you ask, dear byproduct, what is your value? 25 rupees. What is your affordability? 25 rupees. To what extent you are comfortable? 25 rupees. Okay, no problem. You give 25, remaining 1175, I will bear. This is byproduct accounting. This is byproduct accounting. That's all.
Now from the same process, multiple main products may come, multiple byproducts also can come. You understand? So what you do is, first you will calculate what is the realizable value of the byproduct. You subtract it from the process cost. The remaining net cost will be apportioned between main product 1 and main product 2. You understand? So write down. Again, what is the issue? Issue number 1 is how to apportion joint cost. Put the heading apportionment of joint cost. Between joint products. This is part 1. What will be part 2? Apportionment of joint cost between joint product and by product. So, here what is the example? Out of process 1, two main products are emerging. A and B. Out of process 1, two main products are emerging. A and B. Okay, now process cost is say rupees 1 lakh. Process cost is 1 lakh. Okay, details. Details of A and B. Quantity 1000 cages, 2000 cages. Selling price 10 rupees. 8 rupees. Okay. Now, method 1. Apportion joint cost in the ratio of physical quantity or this is what we call output. So, what is the ratio? You tell me the ratio. All of you are listening to class or sleeping. Tell me the ratio. What is the ratio of quantities? Hello, everybody, tell me the ratio in the chat box. What is the quantity ratio? The ratio is 1 is to 2. Now, apportion the joint cost rupees 1 lakh between main product A and main product B in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Okay, so share of A, share of B total. Now, you tell me how to calculate share of A. You tell me how to calculate share of A. Can I say 1 lakh into 1 by 3. This is 1 lakh into 2 by 3. So you tell me what will be share of A. Hello, answer. 33, 333. What will be share of B? Total. That's all. So this is based on quantity. Now method two. Apportion joint cost in the ratio of sales revenue. Apportion joint cost in the ratio of sales. Selling price based apportion also you can do 10 is to 8 also but that is stupidity. 10 is to 8 will be stupidity. So you can take sales. So what is the sales? A, B. So quantity 1000, 2000. Selling price 10, 8. Sales value is, can I say this into this? How much you tell me? 10,000 and 16,000. So, can I say ratio is 10 is to 16 or 5 is to 8? Is it 5 is to 8? Now, you calculate and tell me. So, this is 1 lakh. 
into 5 divided by 13 5 and 8 13 portions so 1 lakh into 8 by 13 so calculate tell me is it 38462 38462 is it 61538 total 1 lakh this is based on this is based on what sales revenue Comments are can there be method 3 yes method 1 and method 2 are actually not preferable method 3 is preferable this is called net realizable value at split of point this is called net realizable value at split of point okay comments are how to do that now look here particulars a b okay observe carefully if I know that joint cost is this much if I know that joint cost is this much and further processing cost is this much so can I say this is my total cost so this is cost of production add selling expenses x x so here I will say this is cost of production cost of production add selling expenses so can i say this is total cost i'll add profit then can i say this is selling price guys any doubt in this pro forma you understand this pro forma give me a sign do you understand this so i'm taking joint cost and further processing cost both put together is my cost of production add selling expenses to it then total cost will come and then add profit selling price will come now what we do is a reverse upside down reverse so what will we do is take sales revenue xxx xxx less profit this is called total cost correct then less selling expenses it is called cost of production then less further processing cost can i say that this is some value So, if this is say for example 100 and 250, for example, this will be the ratio in which the joint processing cost should be apportioned. This is a better way because when you consider here further processing cost you are considering, profit element you are considering, value addition you are considering. So, this will be the net realizable value at split of point. At split of point because because see try to understand the process here here joint cost so this is split of point so this is split of point product a came product b came this is further processing cost further processing cost this is further processing cost okay after that this from this point this is selling expenses this is selling expenses okay then add profit sales then add profit sales so now what i am doing is i am taking this what i am doing is i am taking this and i am trying to travel back to this split of point 
I'm taking sales as the basis and I'm traveling back to split of point, which is actually technically a correct method. Why you know you are considering the cost, you are considering the profit, you are considering the uh, selling expenses involved, you are considering the whole affordability of A and B. So this is more justified. So this is called, this is called net realizable value at split of point. What is this called? This is called net realizable value at split of point. How to do that? Take sales revenue of the final product. Subtract profit, you will get total cost. Subtract selling expenses, you will get uh, cost of production. Subtract further processing cost, you will get some value. In that value, that is called net realizable value. Net re this is called net realizable value. Let's split off. In this ratio, you will apportion joint cost. This is a better method. You understand? Guys, you understand method 1, 2, 3. We will solve some problems on this. Hello everybody, did you understand method 1, 2, 3? Method 1 is physical quantity, method 2 is sales revenue, method 3 is net realizable value at split of point, correct? Then, then, Pavan sir, what about byproduct? What about byproduct? Till now we have discussed about main products. What about byproduct? Simple, simple, in case of byproduct, Step 1, calculate the net realizable value of byproduct. Step 2, step 1, calculate the net realizable value of byproduct. Step 2, credit the net realizable value of byproduct to process account. That means in process account, in process account, two raw material, two wages, two expenses, two overheads by normal loss, by byproduct. That means what is happening? That means you are subtracting it from the process cost. So what is the meaning of credit the net realizable value of byproduct to process account? What is the meaning? The meaning of step two is that we are subtracting the NRV of byproduct from the process cost like your half ticket cousin okay so it will be like this it will be like this total process cost is 10 lakhs byproduct byproduct 500 cages has come selling price of byproduct is 10 rupees so net realizable value of byproduct is 5000 therefore net process cost is 95000 so this 95000 will be borne by the main product or main products if there are more main products all the products will share this 95000 so this is what we do for byproduct. Guys, you understand this? You understand byproduct? Step one, calculate net realizable value of byproduct. Step two, credit the NRV of byproduct to process account. Step three, net process cost is to be borne by the main product or main products. That's all. There is another concept called co-product. But not necessary for our calculations we will never see co-product normally they have given one single line co-product when you open ICI study material and when you read everything joint products every line every letter I have explained by product every line every letter I have explained then you will go to co-product and say Pavan sir did not explain what is this co-product that is not relevant for our calculations but still because one single line is there in ICI study material I am telling that also these co-products generate from homogeneous processes but not same process. Joint product, by-product come out of same process. Co-products come out of similar process but not same process. For example, wheat and rice. 
you are growing wheat in your land you are growing rice in your land process could be more or less same the activities what you do could be more or less same but there is no situation of sharing expenses between wheat and rice because that is separate process this is separate process that is the reason accounting is not required so this joint product or by product accounting is not required because everything you do for the two acres of growing wheat you know separately for this five acres of growing rice you know cost separately there is no common input also so these are co-products which are not relevant for our calculations so now now i have explained you this issue number one how to apportion joint cost to various joint products and byproducts are we done with issue one we'll solve many problems on this but do you understand the concept guys all of you tell me in the chat box do you understand the concept very good now question number two put the heading whether further processing is beneficial or not whether issue number two whether further processing is beneficial or not so look here particulars a b okay quantity thousand two thousand selling price at split off 10 rupees 8 rupees further processing cost is 10,000 35,000 okay new product is A plus this is B plus selling price after further processing selling price after further processing okay is say 12 rupees 14 rupees okay quantity quantity of a plus quantity of a plus is say for example 500 here say for example 1800 now this is the data given shall we do further processing or not shall we do further processing or not simple how you do this you know particulars a b sales revenue if not further processed sales revenue if you are not doing further processing can i say this is 1000 units into 10 rupees 10000 can i say this is 2000 into 8 rupees 16000 sale revenue after further processing so can i say it is 500 into 12 500 into 12 so how much is 500 into 12 yo 6000 so we'll do one thing this is if it is 800 into 12 9600 So selling price after further processing say 18 rupees uh, and this is say 800. So 800 into 18 how much? 14,400. Very good. So 800 into 18. Take it as 800 into 18. 14,400. Here how much? 1,800 into 14. 25,200. 1,800 into 14. 25200 or we'll take this as 24 okay so 1800 into 24 no take 35 a random example no it will happen like this only take 35 so 1800 into 35 63000 Now can you tell me value addition incremental sales 
Guys, can you calculate and tell me what is incremental sales here? Hello, I want to answer from you. What is the incremental sale revenue? Fast, fast, don't take much time. Can I say 4,400 here? Correct, here. Nine thousand two hundred, right? Forty seven thousand. Oh, what is nine thousand two hundred, right? Forty seven thousand it is. Now tell me further processing cost. What is the further processing cost you need to incur? Ten thousand thirty five thousand. So net profit due to further processing. Can you tell me what is net profit due to further processing here? Can you tell me what is net profit due to further processing? Minus 5600. Minus 5600. Here 12,000. So should we process it further? You tell me. Should we process A further into A plus? Should we process A into A plus further? Yes or no? No. Should we process B into B plus further? Yes. That's all. This is how you make a decision. So, sale revenue at split of point, sale revenue after further processing, the difference between these two is called incremental sale revenue. You understand it? Sale revenue, so it is like this. Sale revenue after further processing less sale revenue at split off. This is X. This is Y. So when you do X minus Y, this X minus Y is incremental sale revenue less further process cost Z then you will get net benefit if the net benefit is positive if the net benefit is positive process further if net benefit is negative don't process further that's all now we are done with the whole universe of theory in this chapter we will do some quick problems that's all so there are some you know seven eight problems in ICI study material fada 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 will complete everything Shall we go ahead? Taru, before uh, going further, uh, mind further processing, uh, not accepting uh, breaks are. Uh, hello, shall we take a break? Any doubts you have up to this? So, chalo, we'll take a break and come back.